So, you're a crossword fanatic and have finally decided to try to create your own. However, you also love symmetry and good design. So you came up with a set of rules they should follow. So number one, the crossword must contain exactly four words. These four words should form four pairwise intersections. What do we mean by that? So uh, they give us an example over here. When we say pairwise intersections, we mean like crossword and formation are intersecting at the, at the R over here. Crossword and square are intersecting at the S here. Formation and something are intersecting at the O and square and something are intersecting at the E. So basically the idea is that there are four, you know, points of intersection. Um, if, for example, instead of the word square, if this was the word, um, uh, I don't know, like uh, sun or something like that, you know, something that wouldn't go as far as to actually intersect something, the other word there, we wouldn't have four pairwise intersections. So we do need to sort of form this like rectangle of intersections here. Okay, so uh, what's next? All words must be written either left to right or top to bottom. So no, you know, spelling a word upwards or right to left and certainly not diagonal. Finally, the area of the rectangle formed by empty cells inside the intersections isn't equal to zero. Okay, so what do we mean by that? Well, uh, basically we mean like this word here, the formation and the word square, they can't be like touching each other. That's too close. You know, we don't want a situation where we'd be spelling a bunch of little two letter words or something like that. Um, yeah, so basically it, it looks like these are all the possibilities we could possibly come up with for these, for this particular set of words. And so that's basically the answer that we want to give because the question is asking how many ways can you do this? Given these four words, find the number of ways to make a crossword following the above described rules. Note the two crosswords which differ by rotation are considered different. That, that's important to know. Let's see if we have any of those over here. So like, uh, for example, if we take a look, I, I guess, yeah, that is sort of how they're arranged, right? So if we were to take a look at this first one over here, we see that there's formation and then square. And square is like nestled right in between these words such that they're like the, the border lines of it. Uh, and same thing over here, we've just rearranged it. So now crossword and something are the vertical ones and formation and square are the horizontal ones. So we've just reversed the directions there. So these are considered different ones, so we wanna count those twice. And you know, maybe that'll allow us to make some kind of assumption in terms of how we're gonna do the problem, but eh, you know, we'll see. Uh, did I resize that too much? Uh, who cares? Anyway, uh, so let's see, what are they giving us? They're giving us an array of distinct strings, the words that we need in order to uh, make our crossword. There are gonna be exactly four of them every time. And the length of them is gonna range from three to 15. Okay, and then we basically just wanna output how many ways there are to do that. Okay, so how are we gonna do this? Well, I'm thinking, Okay, after all, it is the labyrinth of nested loops. So maybe we'll use some nested loops. That might be nice, right? But just to get into the hang of this, because this is kind of an intimidating problem to begin with. If we look at all this stuff that we have to do, um, I want to simplify it a little bit. So just for the sake of simplicity, I want to make, uh, I guess, a bit of a sub problem out of this. So just to begin with, let's find how we would do this problem if it was just two words. Okay. Let's say it was just two words. So we're basically just gonna work with the first two out of these four words here. And we're gonna see, well, um, yeah, how can we modify these things? How can we, sorry, not how can we modify them, but using them, how can we figure out how many ways they could combine to form a valid crossword? So what I'm talking about in this case, if it's just two words, we want basically one going this way, one going this way. And we're just trying to find so a situation where this would be the same letter in both cases. That's basically the idea. Okay, so I'm gonna start by just giving some names to these. Let's just say, um, actually, you know what? Let's say H word and V word, okay? This is gonna be horizontal word and vertical word. And these are gonna be respectively assigned the values of words.slice uh, from zero to two. Okay, so just the first two of these things. 
So let's just do a quick console log of H word and V word. Let's run this and we'll see what we get. So crossword and square. So it's a destructuring assignment. Nice little useful tool. You know what? Just looking at this right now, I'm actually curious. Like what would happen if we did this? Would it give us an error? Or would it just disregard the other ones? Yeah, that would still work, I guess. So we're still getting crossword. We're still getting square as these first two. So we don't actually need to slice it. And I know that doesn't really seem like much, but in some ways I, th I think maybe it's better because I mean, like we're not making a deep copy of the array this way, right? Or maybe we are, I don't know if H, here, check this out. Let's, let's see what happens if we actually modify words. So we'll say words at zero is assigned the value of cool. Let's try that and okay. So it is making a deep copy in this sense. Um, all right, cool. So basically H word and V word, uh, they're gonna be whatever the words were to begin with in here before we make any modifications like this. And keep in mind, we're not really gonna make any modifications, so I don't think it really matters all that much. Anyway, that stuff's all good to know. So what do we wanna do with this? Well, basically, um, there are a lot of ways that these words could potentially intersect, right? So maybe we should go to the drawing board. I don't know if I cleared it last time. Oh, looks like I didn't. Okay, so let's clear this and let's talk about it. So basically, uh, yeah, it's good color. Let's say we have, what was it, crossword and square? So crossword. And square. So as Q-U-A-R-E, it could be like this, right? That's a possibility. Or maybe we have it over here where, uh, where square is being spelled downward this way. Or um, is there any other way we could arrange this? Yeah, I guess there would be because we could say this is the, uh, the R from square, right? So I can spell the rest of the word out here. And the idea is that there are a few things to keep in mind. The horizontal position where the word is gonna intersect might be different and the vertical position of the intersecting word might be different as well. So basically what we might wanna do here is we'll take this word square and we'll say, okay, well, it's got six letters. Uh, we wanna basically find all the different areas, all the different locations where it could intersect any one of these letters. So we could basically do a double loop here, a nested for loop or something like that and say for every one of these characters of the word square, we want to basically just go through every one of the characters of this word. And every time we find one that has the same character, well, we'll just add that to our counter, you know, because in this case, I mean, this is a valid crossword formation. The green one up here is another valid crossword formation. So this is a much less complicated problem than what we actually eventually want to do with this. But it's at least going to give us the idea of, uh, you know, a way that we could maybe do this. So let's, let's give that a try. We'll do a, a double loop here. Now, I wanna try this using for of loops because those are a lot of fun. So we could say for const h letter of h word. Okay, so every letter of the horizontal word. What do we wanna do with it? Well, we basically wanna compare it. Whoops, don't forget the four. We basically wanna compare it to the vertical letter of the vertical word. And we wanna see if they're the same. So we'll say if h letter is V letter, then uh, I guess we could say formations plus plus. So we'll say let formations be assigned the value of zero. In this case, we'll say formations plus plus because we found another one, right? We found one where it's gonna work. And at the end, there we go. At the end here, we wanna return formations. I was hitting shift instead of enter. That's always annoying. Anyway, let's run this. Okay, it's saying yeah, we got four ways that that can happen. So, all right, that's cool. It might seem a little surprising. You might be looking at this and thinking like, wait a minute, four different ways. How is it that you're having fewer ways that you can form a crossword with these two, yet six ways that you could form a crossword with all four of them? Doesn't it seem like you'd have fewer ways uh, of finding combinations with all four? Well, yeah, because we need to consider a few other things. First of all, this is not considering rotations. This is where we're saying 
the horizontal word is always horizontal, the vertical word is always vertical. So really, if we wanted to consider rotations, we're just gonna double this because you know if it works this way, it'll work that way. So really, we should be returning formations times two. So now we have eight, and yeah, it's bigger than this, but it might seem a little suspect that it's not you know, like way bigger than it. And that's because we're only considering crossword and square. We're not considering the uh, formations that we get from like crossword and formation, from crossword and something, from any other set of two of them. So basically the idea is that this isn't, this isn't uh, considering all the same possibilities that this one eventually will. Okay, so this one, 20 different ways to do this. Let's actually, hold on, let's go back to this previous one because it said that before rotations, there were basically four ways of doing it. So if we're treating the crossword as the horizontal word and square as the vertical word, we still should have four ways of doing this. So uh, I guess let's try to count the four. I mean, we sort of found two earlier, right? Because we were saying that it could be, uh, square could be where it is right now, or it could be over here. So that's three of them we've got at this point, but let's see, there aren't any other S's. Oh, there's another R over here. Okay, so uh, I guess square, yeah, it could be written over here as well. All right, so that makes sense. Let's just make sure there aren't any others. So what else would we wanna consider here? Uh, there are just these two S's, just these two R's. There are no Q's in crossword, there are no U's in crossword, there are no A's and there are no E's. So that's why we only have these four possibilities here. Okay, cool. So that's nice. Um, is that gonna be it? Well, no, we need to add on more to this, right? So I'm thinking we're probably gonna have to maybe complicate this one a little bit because we're gonna have the position of our, yeah, we're gonna have the position of our vertical word, right? So like square, for example. But now let's say we want to bring in another word, like, you know, formation. So I guess we'll do something like this. V word one and V word two. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to have two vertical ones now and one horizontal one. So this is getting us a step closer to what the actual problem is asking us. We're incrementally working our way up to it. We'll get there. Uh, eventually, I promise. Anyway, the point is, we're working up to it right now. So, oh yeah, and we don't know these, the word two, yeah, cool. So this should just, uh, yeah, all right, all right, all right. Let's just do that for now. Should probably get all the same answers as before. Yeah, eight crossword square formation. Okay, cool. So, um, what do we want to do from here? Well, basically, let's think about it. So. We're gonna to have to keep another rule in mind at this point. So uh, specifically this one over here, okay? This is really important because this means that if we have the word square over here and our other word is formation, right? Well, we might say, ooh, there's a nice juicy O there. We could just say like uh, formation and start writing that in. But then we quickly realize, oh, actually that's too close to this square over here. And it's also too close to this square over here. So those wouldn't be possibilities. We can't consider this as a possibility if we have this one here and this one here. So we sort of need to consider the position of our other vertical word if we're actually gonna make this work. So um, it's kind of interesting because now we have two vertical words, but really the thing we wanna loop through more than once now is the horizontal word because the positions of the vertical words, well, they're gonna be two positions, you know, one for the for V word one, one for V word two, and they've gotta be separated in some way. So we're gonna to have to consider the indices here to make sure that the absolute value between them is at least two. Yeah, at least two. Okay, cool. So we're gonna say for H letter one of H word, actually not even. Not even, we're not even gonna be able to use an of loop here because we need to make sure that the letters aren't that close together. So we're gonna have to say something like for let i be assigned the value of zero, i is less than h word um, dot length, i plus plus. And then within this, we're gonna do another for loop. So we're gonna say for let j be assigned the value of zero, j, is less than h word dot length, which now I'm realizing we're using that twice. We should probably make a constant for it, but eh, for now it's okay. 
All right, and then we'll say const h letter one and h letter two is going to be assigned the value of. Uh, there's probably a fancy way we can do this. I mean, it's basically going to be like h word at i and h word at j. You know, I'm sure there's a way we could like pick this apart and use like a map over here or something like that if we really wanted to get fancy, but. I think we're okay doing it like this, hopefully. Let me know if anyone uh, has a difference of opinion on that. Anyway, uh, okay, so basically we're gonna do something like this. We're gonna cut this out. We're gonna paste it in over here. And at this point, yeah, we can probably still use the for of loop in this case. Uh, but what we wanna make sure of is, um, actually, hold on a sec. We don't wanna do anything unless i and j are spaced out enough. So we'll say if, math.abs, I guess, because we want to take the absolute value of their difference, right, of j minus i. Yeah, if math.abs of j minus i is, um, is less than two, then not break, we want to continue. We'll just move on to the next one immediately. So why did I do it this way, as opposed to saying if it's greater than or equal to, execute all this stuff? Uh, that would have worked, I just don't want to have to indent this any further. So I, I think this is a nice way of doing it. It's basically just saying, oh, uh, if you thought you were going to be able to get any further by having those so close together, uh, think again. Why don't you go ahead and continue to the next one? Okay, anyway, the point is, so we're taking care of that. And the idea is that if we've made it this far, if we make it to this line, then uh, that must mean that this didn't happen, right? Because otherwise we would have just continued to the next iteration. So it must be the case that h letter one and h letter two are sufficiently spaced out. Okay, cool. So we've got these two things. What are we gonna do with them? Well, we've got v letter of v word one. And uh, yeah, I guess we need to go through all the possibilities of that. We'll do something like this in just a sec. And do we need another for loop? Yeah, for const v letter, uh, I guess I'll just use one and two again, of v word two. Yeah, v word two, cool. All right, so what are we gonna do with this? Well, we'll check if, okay, here we go. Hmm, actually, wait a sec. Okay, okay. Maybe there's a better way we could do this. We'll take a look at in just a sec, but we'll say we've got H letter one, right? It's from up there. So if H letter one is the same as V letter one, and if H letter two is the same as V letter two, well then we're gonna add on to the formations here. Okay, cool. So let's see, is that sort of what we want? Let's try running it and we'll see how many uh, possibilities we're getting. Woo, 32. Okay, that's a lot. So, should we go through all 32 cases? Well, keep in mind, up to rotation, uh, there's only 16, right? So, if we're not rotating this thing, or uh, I guess it's not really a rotation as much as it is like a flip or a reflection, even like a diagonal reflection kind of thing. So, disregarding that, you know, if we're not putting in the times two here, that means there's only 16 possibilities for these. So uh, I guess we could try to verify that. So like for each of these, okay, these are the four possibilities for square. Now, uh, let's say this right here is our first square possibility. Let's say this is the one that we're going with. And that means this C over here, this O over here, and definitely this R over here are basically radioactive for our purposes because we can't put the word formation anywhere near that. So we got to basically block this off and say, nope, we're not getting in there. Okay. So formation. Well, it doesn't have any S's in it. So we're going to disregard those. It doesn't have any W's. It does have an O. It has two O's. Okay. So Let's, let's do a tally maybe, two O's, okay? So these ones would both work. Formation has an R, so this one would work. So we're up to three possibilities, and I think that's it for, uh, for this. Oh boy, uh, let me undo these and then I'll get the three back on screen. Okay, three. 
Now let's say we're looking at the next square possibility, this one, which means we're basically gonna blank out these and we wanna look at all the other ones. So formation, again, it has an R, so it could be this one. It could be this one, so that's two more. And what else could it be? Um, formation has two O's, right? So another two from this one. Okay, maybe I'll try to precision erase this uh, thing. <laughs> Not too precise, I guess. Um, that's okay, I'll just rewrite it. OSS, I think I can remember that. Okay, so, OSS, cool. And now let's say it's this square over here. So we'll block out these guys and we'll say, okay, so this is gonna be a juicy one, right? Cause we're gonna get one from the R here, one from the R here. So we're already up two more, but then we're gonna get two from this O and we're gonna get two from this O. So we get another four. So one, two, three, four. Folks, we're getting pretty close. I think there's only three more of these uh, in existence, three more possibilities, I think, right? So let's find out, we'll verify that officially. We'll go back over here and write in what we had, which was SSW. And now we can't use any of these letters for the next one. Okay, so what could we use? Well, we'll get one from the R and two from the O. So, whoops, <laughs> quite a tally. That's 16. Okay, so those are the ones we were looking for. Nice. Okay, so I, I guess at this point, the only thing really left to do is once we have our formation picked out, we need to take our last word and find out how that's gonna fit in. So what do I mean by that? Well, let's take an example here. Let's say we've got crossword. I'm trying to space these out kind of evenly, but I'm not doing a great job. Anyway. We'll say that's crossword over there. And um, I guess we'll make this one square. Square. Cool. And then we'll do formation, I guess, over here. So we'll say F O R Mation. Cool. And then what's the other word? Something. Okay, cool. So how could that fit in or could that fit in uh is that a yeah that's an i there right so could it go through here i think it probably could right so some thing right t-h-i-n-g uh, how do you spell something it's like this right yeah something okay cool so basically it would fit in there now in some ways, this is gonna be a harder one to check, right? Because we're going through these and we're not just trying to check if something is like, um, like if it has, like, oh, okay, what I'm trying to say is this is different. It's We have fewer degrees of freedom than we did before because for this something word, for any time we have a formation that's gonna work for these three, we need to make sure that within that particular setup, this one can fit in. So what do I mean by that? Well, basically, first of all, what I mean is, uh, like, I guess anything in this area is gonna be illegal, right? We're not gonna be able to have anything going across here, here, or here. Okay, if there were more letters up here, maybe we'd be able to put them there. Uh, but we're pretty much limited to, actually, yeah, maybe I should do that. I should show the ones that we can use instead of the ones that we can't. We're pretty much limited to these ones, you know, just these four uh, positions here, because these ones, like this one, this one, and this one are too close, or even overlapping, a previous word. And these ones down here wouldn't work because of uh, the other reason. Yeah, this one. So the four words have to form four pairwise intersections. Well, that wouldn't happen if we tried to put the word any lower, because it wouldn't intersect square. Okay. So I guess what we wanna do from here is we need to figure out if something is gonna fit. We need to figure out um, if, okay, if it has two letters, so in this case, like the E and the I, not just in the word, but spaced out by this amount. 
And we need to be aware of like how these letters correspond to each other, right? So like for example, if, uh, if we have the S here and the O here, then that's gonna be different than like, for example, if formation was going down this way, uh, and you know the, the R here and and the S over here, you know it, it would be a different thing that we're checking. There'd be a different distance between them. So basically, we'll start here and we'll just add up, uh, like we'll add on to the indices of these by the same amount. So we'll say like, okay, we'll start it here or here. Well, and here I should say. And if this is I over here, this is also I over here. That's gonna be the idea, okay? So like whatever spacing we have after this word, it's gonna be the same as this one here. We can't have this one saying like, oh yeah, we found a match down here, just like three indices away. And yeah, we found a match like five indices away. Well, that's not really gonna fly. They need to be the same number of indices away. Otherwise, we're not really forming the, the um, intersection properly. It would mean that the words being spelled kind of lopsided or diagonal or something like that. Okay, so basically, um, yeah, we need to make sure that this word over here, like, okay, we're gonna run a loop that's gonna go backwards and forwards, I guess, as far as it can for these two words, and it's gonna run on both of them at the same time. Then we need to run another loop on this word over here that's gonna run left and right because uh, you know maybe it would fit in a different way at some other level. Uh, I don't think that's gonna be the case for this particular formation, but it doesn't mean it wouldn't be the case for some other formation. So the point is, you know, like, Maybe uh, up here, if we like shift it over a few letters or something like that, then it would also fit in there or something like that. So we need to consider, is there any uh, part of this word where basically there is a character match with the first vertical word and then let's say J, uh, looks like an I on the screen. J. No, you know what? We already used J technically, and I guess we already used I too, so that's not great, but I'll just put K in there for now. So basically K is going to represent the distance between these, and in fact, I guess K actually is like this right here, right? It's the difference between I and J, so okay, I guess we'll uh, we'll keep that in mind. Um, hmm. Now that I'm looking at this, I'm thinking maybe there's a better way to do this just because like we don't know if square is going to be to the left or to the right of formation so we could do it in such a way that's going to accommodate for that like that's going to work either way we could also do it in a way that i don't know maybe it's something different like maybe we could say like let's consider square being to the left of formation and let's consider it a different uh, like permutation if it's formation and then square something like that you know because that way we would at least know that like k is always going to be a positive number but who knows maybe we won't actually have to worry about that too much I guess we'll find out so okay I don't know how much of this we're gonna get done today I mainly just wanted to sort of get started on the task I, I, I'm gonna be honest I actually didn't Think, I didn't think we'd be able to get this far in this amount of time. So I, I thought we would probably already be finished by now, but you know, that's okay. So we could attempt this now, I guess, or at least maybe we'll get started on it. I don't know if we'll make it all the way to the end. So let's think about this. Um, what do we have so far? So we've got I and J, if we make it to this point here, Okay, so if we make it to the point where we're doing formations plus plus, and really we shouldn't actually be doing that anymore, right? Formations plus plus, that's, uh, that's not guaranteed, right? We want to be able to do that, but we can't guarantee that the fourth word is also gonna fit in there, right? So that's the thing that we need to do. So check if the last word fits in here. Yeah, okay. So basically exactly what we were doing over here, the something, it needs to fit in somewhere in here. I guess I can probably centralize that. Okay, cool. So how are we gonna do that? Well, we know about I and J. If we've made it to this point, in fact, we know that I and J have matched up with a, uh, sorry, V letter one and V letter two, right? So those locations are, um, 
are, are having the same character basically but you know what because we need to do this thing over here because we need to specifically this you know where we're saying plus i plus i because of that we do need to know what the index of the character is for each of these so we can't use the for of loop sorry it would be nice but uh, oh well okay so we'll say we'll say um okay we have i and j already k and l i don't know we could do that so let k be assigned the value zero k is less than v word one dot length and k plus plus and then for this next one we'll say uh let l yeah let l be assigned the value of zero l is less than v word two dot length really important to include the dot length on these i know i've definitely made the mistake of uh forgetting those and oh it's a heartbreaker every time okay so const we need v letter one and v letter two now right oh and that's nice i'm getting auto completes on those because i already have them declared downstairs cool all right so we'll just do something similar to what we have up here we'll say um yeah, it's going to be V word one at K and V word one, V word two, sorry, at L. Yeah, yeah, very, very similar to what we had over here with our horizontal word. So let's try running this and we'll see if we're still getting that 32 and we won't because the formations plus plus is no longer present. So let's try that. And yeah, we're still getting the 32. So it's at least working the way it did before. Are we ready for this to start happening? I mean, are we ready to start checking if the last uh, not the last work, the last word. We're ready to start checking if the last word fits in here. Let's try it. So basically, uh, what did we need to make sure? I guess we're going to need one more of these, right? This I thing. And we'll probably have to keep this in mind as well. So um, maybe I'll just say something like const offset is um, J minus I. Yeah. So basically for this one, we'll sort of assume that uh, v letter two is to the right of v letter one, but offset will straighten that out for us in the sense that if it's negative, then uh, that must mean that, that v word two is to the left of v word one. Make sense? Hopefully. Let me know if you, if you have any questions, if there's anything unclear about that. Okay, cool. So we've got our offset here. Now, um, geez, how should we do this? We basically want to be going through, oh, geez, yeah, we need to know the offset. We need to know the vertical offset as well, right? Yeah, we need to know like where this one is starting versus where this one is starting. Because that's, we need that same offset to be happening for these uh, vertical letters here. So, okay, I need to refine this. H offset is going to be this. And uh, const v offset is going to be, I guess, l minus k. Does that make sense? Because l corresponds to v word 2, so this one over here. Uh, k corresponds to v word 1. So basically, like, this would be 1, this would be 0. 1 minus 0 is 1. So that means, yeah, we're going to add the v offset to the second word over here. Okay, cool. Cool. So add this one to the second word and we'll add, uh, sorry, the second vertical word. And this one we're going to be using as kind of like, yeah, the, the offset between horizontal letter one and horizontal letter two. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Who knows? Anyway. Um, so from there, here's what we want to do. And I'm, I will probably mess this up, uh, just to warn you. But eh, mistakes grow the brain. So for, yeah, and I am going to need to use an index for this one. So <laughs> what are we going to use? P? Okay, for let P be assigned the value of zero. Uh, P is less than, well, we need our, our final word here. So, oh, geez, do we need H word too? I guess so, yeah. So we'll say that that's, uh, actually, just so that we don't have to modify a lot of stuff right now, I'll just say H word too. And we'll keep this one H word, but then uh, yeah, I'll modify it later. So 
h word two dot length p plus plus. Okay. And so I think I think what I want to do is this. So const whew, what are we gonna call these? Like intersection one and intersection two? Because we already have H letter one and two, right? So um uh, yeah, intersection one and intersection two. Let's try that. It's going to be equal to, or it's going to be assigned the value of h word two at some index and h word two at oh, some other index. So which indices specifically? Hmm. Okay, hold on a minute though. Hold on a minute. This isn't the only thing we need to change because that's basically covering this over here. You know, that's going through every one of our characters, but we also need uh, a vertical, like, like what I'm calling I over here. I need something like that. So we'll do Q, I guess. And for now, um, I'm just gonna do something kind of weird. So for let Q be assigned the value of of zero? Yeah, I, I guess. Oh, you know what? Okay, maybe we can do something like this. Uh, and then Q is gonna be less than, what is Q? Is Q just gonna be the amount that we're adding on to this over here? Maybe that's not wise. Maybe we'll make Q be like the, um, the vertical position of just word one, because we know that it, it, it can't, um, what am I trying to say here? We know that it can't extend like beyond word one or word two, right? So we might as well just choose one of them kind of arbitrarily. And then, I, I mean, I suppose we could use like math.min, math.max, that kind of thing, but eh, I think this is probably fine. So let's just go for V word one. Yeah. Okay. Uh, v word one dot length and then Q plus plus. So what am I doing with this? Well, basically I'm just going through every one of the characters we have in this first vertical word. Uh, and we want to compare it to whatever character of something that we're currently looking at. So which character of something are we currently looking at? Well, the one that's at uh, P here, right? So H word two intersection one, it'll be H word two at P. Okay. And then intersection two will be H word two at P plus H offset. Okay. That's why we did the H offset thing earlier. So, okay. I think this probably needs to go in here. Okay. It's not looking ideal, but we'll, uh, we'll see how it goes here. Oh, hey, look at that, 500 coins. Folks, I feel rich. Okay, let's, uh, let's continue with this. So we've got our H offset, we've got our V offset. We're using the H offset over here, and we're gonna use the V offset to represent, um, oh yeah. I guess these aren't just intersection one and intersection two. These are basically just the characters of H word two that we're looking at. So, okay, this might get more complicated still, but let's say const um, intersection three and intersection four. <laughs> Sorry about all this. We'll refine these later. I mean, we're basically just spitballing at this point. We're just trying to come up with a few things and then we'll refine it from there, okay? This is like our brainstorm. And by the way, this formations plus plus, if it does happen, it's gonna happen at the most deeply nested level at this point. So might as well just clean that up. Ugh, and I hate to see that. I mean, to me, that's, I don't wanna say a mark of failure, but it doesn't make me feel great about finding ways around using nested loops in here because it looks like we're using a, one or two of them. Okay. So can we just get a bit more room? Yeah, that's nice. All right, bit of breathing room, that feels good. 
Okay, let's continue with this. So what do we have here? We've got intersection three, intersection four. What are those gonna be? Well, basically intersection one and two are gonna correspond to just the something, right? We're just going through and saying, okay, well, um, maybe it's the E and the I here. But before that, uh, uh, whoa, whoa. I right clicked and it, it did a thing. Huh, I don't know how to get rid of that. Oh, paste, that's how you paste? Oh man, okay, that's good to know. Anyway, um, okay, let, let's not paste for now. Let, can we make it go away? There, my, okay, fine. Anyway, uh, all right, so what I was trying to say is if we know the uh, horizontal offset here, what would it be? One, two, three. So there are you know, two characters in between them. So it could be the S and the E. It could be the O and the T. It could be the M and the H. It could be the E and the I. It could be the T and the N. It could be the H and the G. Those are the only possibilities here. So yeah, in fact, that means I think we can probably do something like this, minus H offset. Um, do we need an equal to in this case? Because if h offset is three, yeah, because it would be three in this case, right? So if the h offset is three, then um, let's see, what's the length of this word? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we would want it to stop. The last one we would want it to check is this one over here, uh, which would be zero, one, two, three, four, five, index five. So let's see, nine minus three is six. So yeah, it should be strictly less than then. Okay, cool, good to know. Minus H, minus H offset, okay. Yeah, that's good. And then uh, what else? So yeah, I think that makes sense, right? Okay. So then these guys over here, these other intersections, uh, those are gonna correspond to the characters of our two words here. So we're gonna start with the first character of the, of the first word, you know, just S-Q-U-A-R-E. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's just gonna be V word at, what are we calling that? Q, yeah. So V word one at Q. And then the other one is gonna be from V word two. But it's not just going to be from Q, it's going to be Q plus V offset, okay? So V offset because there, there's a difference here, right? This one started one character later than this one. So when this one is at the zeroth position, we want this one at the one position. When this one's at the one position, we want this one at the two position. And we want to keep that going until there's, you know, like one of them is going to run out. So naturally this would go to the end of this. But what if there wasn't a character over here? Well, we should probably check that as well. So um, there's probably a way to bake that into the loop, you know, say something like uh, like a math.min involving the, the length of this one minus the V offset or, or something like that. Um, yeah, I guess we could spend the time to think about that, but I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do that easy mode for now, okay? Because basically the, the worry here, the danger is like, well, if this didn't exist, then basically this thing over here would be a null, right? Q plus V offset, that's gonna be null. We know this one's not gonna be null. We know that one's gonna work. And, and we actually know that both of these are not gonna be null either because of the restriction that we put on, uh, on this thing because of subtracting the H offset. So really uh, the only worry is that this one, uh, intersection four might not exist. It might be a null. But then again, if that ends up being the case, I don't know if we need to worry about it because none of the others are gonna be null. So if we're just checking something like this, like if intersection one is the same as intersection three and intersection two is the same as intersection four, I don't think we need to worry about the possibility of there being a null involved uh, because you're not gonna be equal to null, right? Wait, what's going on here? Oh, there we go. Yeah, just wanted that on, on one line. Yeah, there we go, nice nice and easy, it fits. Okay, so let's try that, and uh, hopefully it'll run. That's the main thing I wanna check. Okay, we didn't get any errors here, so that's good. That's, uh, yeah, nice. Okay, we are getting more than I was expecting in terms of, uh, in terms of our number here, so, uh, 
Why is that? Because I was expecting a lot fewer of these. I, I, I thought there would only be, I guess, two. So I must be doing something wrong here. So let's try this. Let's analyze the cases where, where this is going to be true. So formations plus plus. Let's do a little console log here of our intersections, all four of them. And we'll see where it's intersecting. Uh, or at least we'll have some idea of it, I guess, right? So, uh, okay, these are the ones I was worried about. Okay, so E O E O E I E I. Um, okay, so E and O or E and I. I mean, the E and I, I understand. Where's it getting the E and O from? Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry, it, it, it's checking more of these because it's considering the case where formation is written down this way. So that's good, that, that makes sense. Um, okay, I'll just, I'll do this, okay? So, actually wait, I understand why there's an undefined for, for intersection four. I'm actually a little puzzled at, at why we're seeing that here though. It doesn't feel like that should be happening. Okay, hold on a minute. Let me also get, um, I guess, P? Yeah, P. Let's get P in there. Let's see what's going on with that. So P, a P value of zero is giving us undefined? Well, why would that be? Undefined for intersection two and for intersection four. Um, okay, so this is the one I'm a little worried about. I understand why why that one's giving us a problem, I think, anyway. Uh, but yeah, not not this one over here. Now, first of all, okay, we're getting an S, so it's the S for square. Oh, well, is it just that these are too close? Yeah, S for square. And then, uh, well, wait, shouldn't that work? That's kind of strange. I might need to investigate this a little more. Maybe the, the uh, offset thing isn't working the way I was expecting it to. Maybe it's putting formation to the left. Yeah, like over here or something like that. Maybe that's what's going on. Uh, I guess I, I could just do something like this. So if, um, if intersection two and intersection four, okay? So if they're defined then we'll do this stuff. In fact, I guess I could just bring that in with the rest of this stuff, right? If intersection two and intersection four and intersection one is the same as intersection three and intersection two is the same as intersection four, then we're gonna have a formations plus plus. So will this give us the four we're looking for? Yeah, it does. Okay, so basically we're not getting the whole six here because there's another possibility that we would get by just rearranging the words here, you know, arranging them in, in some different, formation okay so basically um geez how could we do this i guess we could just sort of rearrange these right so i'm going to make this a new function so do crossword with uh with words over here and by the way like i realize that this is very sloppy it's very hacky and all that we're going to clean this up the next time we meet. I just wanted to sort of get into it, kind of prove the concept at this point. Uh, but basically, we've got um, we've got something here. It's not it's not totally worked out yet. We're definitely going to try to improve this the next time we meet. Anyway, uh, hey Rainbow, welcome to the chat. So, crossword formation. What do we want to do with this? Well, basically, we want to call this function a whole bunch of times for a bunch of different uh, rearrangements, right? So um, what's the best way to do that? I'm going to try to do this manually, I guess. So this is probably a really, really bad idea. But I think I'm just going to do something like this for now, okay? It's not like me to, to make code this sloppy usually, but... Uh, Desperate times call for desperate measures. Okay, so basically, um, how should we call this? Um, I guess we'll do something like this. We'll, we'll call do crossword with, wait, yeah, yeah, okay. It's green, but uh, 
it, it knows, right? Is it the same thing? Yeah, okay. So we'll spread out words here. Okay, if we were to just do this, I think we'd get four for the first test. That would, oh, maybe not. Okay, is that because this is returning? Hmm. Oh, it's because we're not supposed to spread it. We're supposed to call it with the actual array here. My mistake. Okay. Well, I suppose we could probably even just do this, right? Like just take that, put it up in here, get rid of this, and uh, and certainly get rid of that, and then put the spreader on here. Would that work? Yeah, that works. Okay, cool. So, um, all right, we want that, but we also want some other possibilities here. So on the next line here, I'm gonna say plus do crossword, uh, do crossword, of dot 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 words with some other rearrangement here. So maybe what I'll do for the rearrangements is this. So not just words, I'm gonna say, um, I'm gonna take some array and I'm gonna map it to something, yeah. I'll just say I is gonna get mapped to words at I. Yeah, why am I doing this? Well, I wanna rearrange these. So normally if I had zero, one, two, three, this is gonna be no different than what I have up here because it's basically just gonna say, okay, I wanna take zero, use that as the index, so we'll have words at zero, then we'll have words at one, then words at two, then words at three. Well, that's already what we have, so we'll probably get eight for this one, I think. Yeah, eight, good. So um, here's my claim. Because we're considering the rotations or uh, the reflections by doing the times two at the end here, because of that, uh, I'm gonna say, I don't think it's gonna matter. Like, I think we'll be able to keep the, the one horizontal, the first horizontal word as the horizontal word. I, I don't think we're gonna need to change anything else. Uh, sorry, I think we, we'll need to change everything else, but that's the one thing we won't need to change. So uh, 0, 1, 3, 2, that's another possibility. Whoops, didn't mean to submit that. Um, we'll, we'll let that do its thing, I guess. Incorrect. Oh, I got two of them? Okay. Execution time limit exceeded. That doesn't bode well. Okay, so two of them are right now. We actually are getting all the possibilities over here, uh, but we're not gonna have all of them being right yet. So yeah, let's do this. Um, let's paste some of these in. Console.time is inconsistent. How do you do the date trick? The way I normally do it, if I'm trying to measure some kind of performance is I just do like, you know, at the very beginning, I say const start time is assign the value of new date. And then at the end, after, you know, like you know, call your function sort of thing. And at the end, I say const end time is new date. And then we'd say something like, if we wanted the execution time, return end time minus start time. That's, that's how I normally do it. Does that answer your question? Hopefully. Anyway, uh, so for now, what do we want here? We basically want to get all the possibilities here. So we've got 0, 1, 3, 2. What if then we had 0, 2, 1, 3, or maybe uh, 0, 2, 3, 1? Okay, so that could work. Maybe uh, the three is the next one. Then we have a two here and a one here, or maybe we have the one here and the two there, and that's the three. Are there more possibilities than that? I, I don't know. Is that all of them? There might be more. Um, uh oh. <laughs> okay, so I must have done something wrong over here because I'm getting some sort of rearrangement that's that's not totally working. Uh, I'm getting too many of these now, so I, yeah, I'm not really sure. Um, yeah, I think we're gonna leave it there for now. I, I, I don't wanna mess with this anymore. I, I think, hey, let's revert it back to that previous state we had. Where was it? Was it this one? Was that the one that was giving us? Oh, even that's causing a problem, eh? Hmm, okay, well, this one, this one was okay. So, great. This one's giving us two correct answers. I'll take it. Okay, for now, that was more than I was expecting to get for uh, for today, for today's episode. So yeah, I, I'm satisfied with that. We'll uh, we'll finish this up next time. Uh, it'll hopefully be a lot less sloppy. So anyway, um, 
You don't call any of Date's methods. Uh, no, not, not for that, usually. I mean, because if you subtract two dates, I think the default behavior is that it's going to give you the number of milliseconds in between them, which is usually what we want when we're trying to measure performance, right? But I, I, I don't claim to have, like, the, the best way of doing this. Like, I, I'm sure there are other people who would be able to give you better advice on that. So, um, yeah, take it with a grain of salt, I guess. Anyway... Yeah, we'll wrap up there for now. We didn't make it totally through, but hopefully next time.